Well, well the search to uh, synthetic lethal targets has um, really involved RNA interference and there's been a lot of work done on it um, and a lot of uh, targets identified but really none of those targets have really translated through to effective drug discovery. So one of the issues of that is the nature of the RNA, RNA interference technology itself. So it can't knock down protein expression completely. It, it does so to various levels of cells and it also um, has off-target effects. And so what you have with RNA interference is a mixture of false negatives and false positives, which if you're trying to find uh, genes associated um, with specific survival and say p 3 mutants, means that you get some false positives and false negatives. And so when you sort of integrate that across you know, a panel of cell lines, you just get rubbish. So CRISPR-Cas9, because it's um, more penetrant, actually does knock out genes completely, loss of function, it uh, gives you greater insight into that set of essential genes, which is specific to a genotype, and therefore can discover synthetic lethal targets more reliably. Now, having used both techniques on the same panels of cell lines, the amount of overlap between the RNA interference set and the CRISPR-Cas9 set is very, very small. So it's definitely discovering novel stuff. Yeah, so the CRISPR-Cas9 screens which have come out um, over the last three years have really been using positive selection. So the first ones done for, were to find the genes which when knocked out conferred drug resistance or toxin resistance to things like 6 star guanine, vemurafenib, bacterial toxins. So what you have is um, a very, very complicated population at the start of you know, 50 million cells with uh, 100,000 different lentiviral inserts in them uh, and it's all analyzed by deep sequencing. So you hit them hard with your drug uh, a tiny proportion survive, you deep sequence it, and you find that certain gene knockouts have become 100 or 1,000 times more abundant in the population. This is easy. We've done these screens. We've done them really badly by accident, um, not for our mistakes, of course, and they still work. So to do the opposite, find the set of genes which, when knocked out, lead to um, increased sensitivity to a protein or, or actually a defining life or death itself is much, much harder and no one's published one yet. People have done it with RNA interference um, and the results here, yeah, as, as I said in my last question, are a bit iffy. So we've done a whole genome screen um, with CRISPR-Cas9 using low-dose taxol and also glucose starvation, which are conditions the cell survives. And we found um, you know, 20 to 30 interesting targets in both of those situations. Uh, and because we don't have haploid cells, we have an easy way to validate the results and see if they're true. And so in our taxol screen, for example, we found four kinesins, uh, not just any kinesins, but kinesins involved in mitosis, were, uh, became essential in the face of low-dose taxol. And similarly, in, in the glucose starvation situation, we found that uh, many components which are of mitochondrial electron train uh, complex one were also essential.